Would you pray with me? Open our hearts and minds, God, that we might experience you anew and open us that we may then be faithful witnesses of your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It can't be overstated how devastating it was to the people of Israel. You may know the story. The Babylonian army marched into Jerusalem in the 6th century BCE. They destroyed the city and the temple. The people of Israel could hardly let it sink in. They were in shock for goodness knows how long. They believed that God would always protect the city. And since God lived in the temple, God would always protect the temple. No enemy could touch it. Yet it happened. Not only that, but also many of Israel's citizens were taken into captivity in Babylon, which was nearly 900 miles from Jerusalem. Even by today's standards, that's a long distance. Imagine how far it felt in a day before modern travel. Psalm 137 in the Bible expresses the feelings of those in captivity. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and there we wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows, there we hung up our harps, for there our captors ask for us songs and our tormentors ask for mirth, saying, sing us the songs of Zion. How could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. It was a long 70 years of captivity. I say that many rather than all people of, uh, the, of Israel wanted to go back home. Some did not because they had put down roots in Babylon. But there were also many who heard of the Holy Land and how it was there that their ancestors had thrived. So there were those who wanted to go to a place that they could call more like home. Going there would mean a new beginning. The opportunity happened when Persia defeated Babylon and King Cyrus allowed those of Israeli descent to go to Israel if they so chose. Some chose to do so. A prophet who lived in the 6th century BCE, two centuries after the prophet Isaiah, spoke the words of Isaiah chapter 43. This prophet alludes to God's liberating the children of Israel from Egyptian bondage. Then they made their way through the sea, if you recall the story. The prophet said that now they would go through the desert that was located between Babylon and Jerusalem. It was a new beginning for the people of Israel. I think that the new beginning actually started as they were in Babylon and grieved as expressed in Psalm 137 that I just read. Many times there can't be newness until there's grief. There are a number of things that come to mind. The passing of a loved one, a failed marriage, the loss of a job, the recognition that we won't experience a particular dream that we had, you and I could add to the list. Before we can move beyond hurt, we must grieve. But God can bring new life beyond the grief. The longer we live, the more joys that we experience in life. I hope that we can look back over the previous year and say that we had many joys. On the flip side, there's pain. The longer we live, the more hurt that we experience. That's simply the way life is. As I said last Sunday, life is really a roller coaster ride. And it will be that way in 2023 because every year is that way. But in the midst of the roller coaster ride, we will have moments of new beginnings. I think of Jesus' first disciples. They experienced his death, but this was followed by resurrection 
which was not only the promise of a new beginning, but was actually the experience of that new beginning. As followers of Jesus, we have the same promise. One of the areas that I need newness from time to time, maybe on a regular basis, is the need to forgive. Can you relate to that? Not forgiving can block the ability to experience newness. We might need to begin by forgiving ourselves for what we have done or what we have failed to do. And if you are like me, you are harder on yourself than you are on anyone else, and you might be harder on yourself than others are on you. The truth of the matter is that people don't think of us as often as we think that they do. As I have heard it said, and maybe you have too, we might stop worrying so much about what others think about us if we realized how little they really do think about us. We might also be blocking newness by not forgiving someone else. Not always an easy thing to do. Perhaps there's some minor slight that someone has inflicted on us so we can more easily forgive them than we can if there's a big hurt. For example, I don't dare say that if we have been abused that we can easily let go. I have a hard time even saying that we ought to let go. I leave it up to each person to work through that for themselves. As our words for meditation have stated it, sometimes there is too much hurt we have done to each other that cannot yet be forgiven. We might also need to forgive God. We're not doing what we feel God should have done or for allowing something to happen that we feel God should not have allowed to happen. As an aside, I point out that there are places in the Bible where suffering is attributed to sin. In fact, there are places where the Babylonian captivity is attributed to Israel's rebellion against God. But that's another sermon for another time. I suspect that the people of Israel had to work on forgiving God for allowing them to go, in, to go into Babylonian captivity. One of the ways that they work through forgiving God is illustrated in the Psalms of the Bible. In a number of them, the psalmists express anger at God for not intervening when they felt God should have. By doing this, the psalmists were more equipped to forgive God. Sometimes the psalmists conclude that God was with them in the midst of their hurt, and God could not be blamed for causing or allowing something to happen. By working through the anger that the psalmists felt, they were able to forgive God. This opened the door for a new beginning. There's another way that we can have a new beginning. In the church, we count time according to the liturgical calendar. Advent each year marks the beginning of a new year so we can tie new beginnings to the liturgical calendar. But we also can't be helped from being tied to the secular calendar. Many of us experience a combination of sadness and hope when January 1st arrives. For some, there's regret for not taking advantage of the opportunities of the previous year. For some, it is hard to accept the fact that they will turn another year older this year. Did you know that you will? I can't believe that I will turn 40 this year. I suppose I can't believe it because it's not true. I'm actually going to turn 35. But it can be difficult to accept our aging because it reminds us of our mortality. But it's also the case that when January 1 arrives, it feels that we are given a new beginning, whether we make New Year's resolutions or not. As people of faith, we can attribute this feeling to our belief that God is always a God of hope. There are several things on the horizon at Central which come as a result of new beginnings that God gives us. One of the things that the council has talked about on a number of occasions is the crafting of a mission and vision statement. 
A new year provides the opportunity to focus on this. A mission and vision statement can help us articulate more clearly who we are as a congregation and gives us clearer direction. Now, too often when congregations do this, the statement gets shelved, but let's hold each other accountable. Let's continue to look back on the statement as a way of keeping us on track. Doing this can bring newness. Another thing that we are considering doing, as you probably know by now, is becoming a just peace church. A committee is in place to help us think through this. There will be opportunities for all of us to give input, particularly though during Lent, we will think through what it means to be a just peace church. In the meantime, I encourage all of us to go to our, con our denominational website and the search engine, look for just peace. You will find information there. In many ways, we as a congregation have already embraced what it means to be such. The question is whether or not we want to take the next step. Let's explore it together. Another thing that is on the verge of happening is providing space in our building for the interfaith children's movement. The council approved this last month at our last meeting. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Interfaith Children's Movement, acronym ICM, their mission statement is this. The mission of the Interfaith Children's Movement is to build a multi-faith grassroots advocacy coalition that works to create a Georgia where all children thrive. As its name indicates, it is an interfaith organization, or as I prefer to call it, an interfaith ministry, it is composed of Christians and those of a number of religious traditions other than Christian. Among other things, the ICM advocates for the most vulnerable children by promoting legislation that benefits children. Our own Evelyn Brewer and Helen Frederick have been very involved in ICM. By providing space, we are embodying the action portion of Mission and Action Board. These are just a few things that come to my mind, ways that God is bringing newness. As our words from Isaiah have put it today, God is doing a new thing. Who knows what else might unfold in 2023? As we pray together and hold hands, God can do and is doing great things through us. Because of God, there's always newness on the horizon. As our words of meditation have put it, we have only begun to love the earth. We have only begun to imagine the fullness of life. How could we tire of hope? So much is in bud. How can desire fail? We only be, have only begun to imagine justice and mercy, only begun to envision how it might be to live as siblings with beast and flower not as oppressors, not yet, not yet. There is too much broken that must be mended, too much hurt we have done to each other that cannot yet be forgiven. We have only begun to know the power that is in us if we would join our solitudes in the communion of struggle. So much is unfolding that must complete its gesture. So much is in bud because of God and because God uses us to make a difference in the world. There is much more that is waiting to sprout. Thanks be to God.